Hey everybody, this is Ozma. I'm going to be playing a game called Bucket Detective, as you can see here. Um, I heard about it through the grapevine, the grapevine being PC Gamer, they put an article out on it. Uh, I happened to look it up. It looked like a Justin Roiland slash Brad Neely kind of uh, dark comedy is what it's advertised as, but I thought why not? Why not play it? It's only a few dollars. Uh, at the very least, it's good for for the channel. You can check out my reactions because <gasps> look, I'm doing face cam. <gasps> you can see me. Uh, I I don't know if this is actually going to be at any any length scary, but if it is, um, I'll be caught off guard and you'll get a very genuine reaction. But with nothing more to say. And with very little known about the game, personally, let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, I haven't really tested anything, so I'm hoping that this works well. Developer commentary we don't want. Uh, apparently there's a bunch of different options for a game that is not a new game, but they're locked, so I'm guessing there's more content than just the main part. I guess? I I'm not really sure. Oh boy. I don't know what I'm in for. No idea. It's loading though. Got some serious loading going on. For reals loading. Wazd to move. So you're gonna hear some key clicks. And you're gonna hear some mouse clicks too, because I gotta interact with stuff. Right click to show hide current goal. So it's objective based. E to zoom or examine. Alright, well, that seems pretty straightforward. Uh, I also heard this. You, a 41 year old man, David okay, Davids. Awesome. You are writing book called Bucket Detective. Book is not good. Truthfully, you not care about write book. You not even like read books because reading gives headache from make think too hard. You are married to wife who is abusive. By abusive, you mean she not do perverted sex whenever demanded. To get perverted sex, you approach girls in the street. But they not give it and instead call you creep and pig. This is why you is writing Bucket Detective. Famous book make it impossible for girls to resist sex, especially glasses girls at nearby community college. At dinner with friend of yours who have recent success in business, you say, writing book is hard. Is there not an easy way to write great book? Friend of yours smile with mischief and says, yes, yes there is. He hand you card with address and say, go here and do what asked of you. In exchange, you will get what is desired. And if you not like, you leave any time. Do not think more than one second to decide this is plain because it's much simpler to create good words on empty page. So, one cold and rainy morning, you arrive at address and enter front door. Uh, well, bad grammar aside, it is compelling. No visitors. Well, I guess that doesn't include me. We have arrived, my friends, in what looks like a very old hotel lobby. We got elevator. Dial 359. Okay. Guess I can't go in there. Can I just leave? This situation just not for you. Unsure if building too creepy or just... you just not like help anyone with anything, you go back home. You work more on Bucket Detective, but it no longer worth it when you find out some girls say yes to sex if given money. <laughs> they not too pretty, and one give poison to your bedroom parts, but they is pervert when paid enough. You sell desk and computer and car to pay for sex, but after several months, things to sell run out. Wife, of course, she gone by now, and you realize maybe you like her more than you thought. On TV there is talk of great war that is coming, but oh well. Best not to pay attention to things that not completely have to do with you. Well, well, thanks for watching, everyone. This has been Bucket Detective. I just beat the game. Um, yeah, playing the credits and everything. I like this song, by the way. It was in the trailer for it. Very atmospheric, but. 
what I was going to say before the game started and then subsequently ended was this has been compared to uh, Stanley Parable, which is one of my favorite games from a couple of years back. And I thought, hey, that crossed with kind of a Brad Neely feel. That'd be like right up my alley. And I can't quite say whether or not it was because I barely did anything. So I'll tell you what, that video was really short. So what we're going to do is we're going to go for a, a more substantial ending. I'm going to actually explore and see what can happen if you, if you play the game rather than uh, not play the game. It was a non-game, non-ending. Thank you, Jesse Barksdale. Um, let's go ahead and try that again. We're going to go ahead and s skip the intro if that's possible. Let me go ahead and load again. So a substantial load time for what amounts to about five seconds of actual gameplay. Hold to skip. Okay, you, great. A forty-one year old. Keep holding. Yeah, I'm forty-one years old and I'm a pervert who wants to write books to get laid. Um, so let's see how that plays out. I'm gonna really, really get into the role of the character. Let's actually see what we got here. We got an interesting symbol, a dude who doesn't look very happy. I don't really know how to explain that expression, really. And he's getting rained on. And his feet look like hands. He's got, he's got feet for hands. Four toes, three fingers. I'm really gonna absorb all the information I possibly can from this situation. Uh, not really more to this. Really. Got the hour it's an hourglass mouth looking thing and you got the symbols and a lot of rain. It's, it seems like the theme of what's going on here. Dial 359. Okay. This guy's they really like the rain. I guess. I I can't tell if they like it or not. They just they're just all getting rained on. Hi, my name is Gwen Sleepless. I'm a 23-year-old white male, and I'm the building's maintenance man, cook, and I also clean the toilets. I thought it would be nice if once the Dark Lord is reborn to bring in 10,000 years of terror, if people could visit the place where it all began, kind of like a museum to the origin of their torment. So I've installed these boxes, which I call Gwen boxes, all over the building to explain the significance of different areas. Obviously, since the Dark Lord Mishriel, the seven-tongued slayer of kings, the Roaster of the Innocent, the Defiler of the Damned has yet to rise. These Gwen boxes are kind of a work in progress. Gwen boxes. It's as an, a preemptive museum of torment. Well, I guess we can assume that these guys aren't enjoying themselves then. different pitch knocking. I guess my persistence is not going to pay off. Uh, Alright, one more time. No, okay. Bathroom's occupied. We got dinnerware. A lot of the same painting here. Like this. Beth, you don't have to come home. You don't have to do anything you don't want. But please let your brother and me know that you're safe and getting our letters. Thanks, Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex. Um, but please let your brother and me know that you're safe and getting our letters. Please, please, please. All is forgiven. All is forgotten. With unending love, Mom. Gwen, please respond to this as Beth. As Beth, of course. Before we get any unexpected visitors. Uh, Cyrus. So that's, I guess... Cyrus is the guy who runs this place, and he's telling Gwen to uh, forge a letter to stop people from coming over. Let's see what else we got in here. Can I get any of this? No. Well, already we're getting kind of an ominous feel to this. It says to, I gotta dial 359. Okay, whatever. Okay, or not. Um, can I still dial it? I like how I'm getting a dial tone even though the phone is not in any way hooked up to this old timey phone box. Well, I guess I guess three five nine's out of the question, huh? Yeah. 
I would say it's out of the question. The Legend of Cream Hole Cavern. Free Cell's debut novel is a triumph. Gerda Washington, the press to clava mess at times. Really, really, really good. Like, really good. Harry Handmaiden, The Lost Hagos Tribune by Mip Freesell. Okay. Mip Freesell. So I was brought here by my friend who said that if I did what the guy here wanted, all my desires would become real, right? A lot of doors. Three, five, nine. Maybe I got an. Ooh. Shrine to the female reproductive system. I don't know if I want to pray here. Well, that's. A, <laughs> not even sure I can show that on YouTube. There's a lot that I don't feel like I can really show. I mean, I guess this is art. Literally. I mean, it's framed. Does that make it art? That's not for me to decide. Do you think that's art? Look at this guy. Seems like these dudes with the symbols on them are always getting wet somehow. Except this is not a rain cloud. This is a dude with pointy knees and some frigged up face hole. So I'm starting to feel like these are corresponding to the card. So I'll knock on 3, 5, and 9 in order. But let's go ahead and explore. Keep a keep a weather eye on the horizon here. We got blinking lights. A lot of dishware. Oh. What is... That fern is very active. It's one active fern. I'm not sure why it's all active like that. That's weird. But we're not gonna... We're gonna keep an eye on it. Three, five, and nine. Alright, well, let's go find three. Can I run? I feel like I should be able to run. Three. There we go. See, well, gee, three. Seven. That's a pretty overt clue. I try not to be too uh, on the nose about it, but I mean, I'll, I'll take what help I can get. Submit the necessary paperwork. I... Let's take a look at this one. Doesn't seem any different than the other ones we saw. Really not sure what's going on with that plant, but it's enjoying itself, I think. Got some books. Now what? Not really. Okay. Sacrifice finger. Is that paperwork? Can't I just get one of the things from the other room instead of my finger? God. You know, come to think of it, I think my friend was missing his finger, the one who told me to come here, so. Might be necessary if a little bit dark. Can I sacrifice this instead? Let's go ahead and sacrifice the legend of Creamhole Cavern. Actually, can I... The bath is no longer a choice. Doesn't look like the elevator's a choice. I guess the finger is the way to go. Ooh, what's going on here? Oh, you know what? I think that maybe the finger... My name is Gwen Sleepless. I'm okay. a 23 year old. Yeah, that's not gonna help. Let's go ahead and bring the legend of Cream Hole Cavern with us. If for no other reason, I don't see reason not to. Okay, we're not gonna leave it on the shrine to the female reproductive system. We're going to bring it with us. I wish I could look inside. Well, I'm not actually sure I want to look inside, but maybe there's a hint of some sort. Ugh. Oh, I can't. Can't toss it at the thing. Ugh. All right. Well, I guess the finger is the way to go.
Bus bucket Detectives by David Davids. Page one, paragraph one, line one. Main character introduced. He awoke with a fear and a gun in his hand on the road to... Douglas. Ow. Well, that's unfortunate, and... Okay. I looked, I think because it said Los Hogos on here, right? Yeah, Los, Los Hogos. Well, I guess I'm gonna try something different next time. Um, if I play again, I don't know if I'm gonna want to. There's a lot of these same pieces of MS Paint art strewn throughout the mysterious mansion. The Journal of Gwen Sleeveless, April 8th, 1991. My journal pages keep falling out and making me lose them. I guess that's what happens when you buy a used journal that is basically rotting. I'm poor, ha ha ha. Yeah, that's an interesting bit of humor to follow your finger getting torn off. That's ironic. It's about his pages falling out. There's a page that's falling out. Please return, Gwen. Apparently a missing spoon. Let's leave the doors open. Oh, that one closed, so that must mean... There's something weird going on here. Yeah. Alright, well, let's take a look around, see if we can find any extra spoons. Uh, we got Jedediah Holocomb, or Holcomb, and Dr. Z.W. Francis. They got, let's, I'm gonna call him uh, Bad Nose Francis, and you're gonna be uh, <laughs> I don't know, Jedediah seems pretty Pretty on the on point for that. Father's offices. These are the offices of the two fathers, Dr. Z. W. Francis and Jedediah Holcomb, who were the founders and leaders of our happy little <laughs> I almost said cult, but it's a religion. There is a difference. The fathers believed that they were in fact one being that had been divided into two bodies for fear that if one being had so much knowledge, power, and sexual charisma, the universe would be torn into shreds. So to keep that great power separated, the fathers worked without ever meeting face to face or speaking aloud to one another. Instead, they communicated by passing letters through the mail slot between their offices. It was in this way that they laid down the laws of Mishriel, the god among gods, the gimp in the graveyard, the pus of Xanadu. The pus of Xanadu. The gimp in the graveyard. Let's check out Mr. Z.W. Francis's office. And look, there's the mail slot. What we got? The pacifier, a vocal muffler for surgery performed without anesthesia. Figure two, a patient awaiting voluntary surgery. Patient number 17 Point. When gentlemen conversate, the guy discussing the lesser races. Wow. Um, a brief history of the vagina. A man's perspective, also by him. Female anatomy. It's all just female anatomy. Oh, there's the spoon. I'll go ahead and take that with me. Black math. Using mathematics for deception, seduction, coercion, and fun. Okay, I thought it was going to be a racist thing, but it's like a witchcraft thing. That says reverse. Oh, wait. Reading in reverse by some dude. Uh, saliva, a beginner's guide. Keep closed thine mouth. Notes on women in modern society. Whoa, what was that? Did I kick something around? All these other books don't really have anything on them. Sorry. Let me go ahead and... To whom may concern? From who it concerns. We got a lot of X's in here. 
Oh, ZW Francis. All right, let's go ahead and hear. Dr. ZW Francis, known as the Scholar, was a mathematician, physicist, biologist, inventor, painter, and most importantly, a medical doctor specializing in the female reproductive system. He was the first physician to do a deep, deep, deep study of the female body, from a medical perspective, of course. And had the fools in the medical establishment not misinterpreted his work and taken away his license to practice medicine, the writings and tools he developed would be the cornerstone of modern gynecology. Okay, well, we got some notes here. I keep hearing the spoon falling, but I'm not... Oh. It's kind of banging up on the wall, I guess. Request to Lord Mishrael in exchange for service. Harem of 9,999 virgin girls, age 12 to 25. Be really good with computers and also have a ton of money. A sword which kills my enemies without me having to hit them. However, I can still hit them for the cool effect of it. And millions of dollars. Three strong male slaves. I don't care which race. And a television which floats in front of me all, at all times. Tell me whether my bitch wife cheated on me back when she went to Aruba in 1984. Also, my business be successful. Uh, I want to be good. I want to be as good of an actor as Johnny Depp and also as famous. Um... So these are requests that people made. I want to be my brother's talent manager and meanwhile get lots of pussy. For example, getting pussy while he's on a job and I don't have to do much, have too much to do. Uh, be able to eat as much as I want without getting stuffed or gaining weight. That would be awesome. I just want to be able to murder someone without feeling bad about it. I don't know if that means changing my brain to make me a sociopath, maybe? I want the girls in my class to think I'm cool slash hot. I know I'm only 11, but I want to be very powerful, like a leader of an army or a football team. <laughs> I think I can do it well. Should he really be included? Gwen, please make people want to be my friend without me begging them. Ha ha. Ah, oh, poor Gwen. Um, David Davids. That's me. Wants the inspirational motivation necessary to finish his novel, Bucket Detective. It's surprisingly bad. And make it a bestseller. That's me. How did he know? That's a little disconcerting. Um, let's go ahead and return the spoon before we check out what's going on with Jedediah. Because I know that I want that dang spoon. I have a feeling something's going to be weird over here. Oh, wait. Well, I returned the spoon. Nothing really happened. I'm kind of thankful for that, but let's go ahead and see what's going on over here. Did I click the thing? I think I did. Dr. Z.W. Francis... Okay, yeah, I did. And this is... Who's Mishrael? I guess that's the god, right? Okay. That's the cult god that they have. Well, got some interesting things here. We got a lot more of the drawings. The MS Paint drawings. Alright. Ooh, okay. Slavery, slavery is a state of mind. A, collective, a, a collection of persuasive speech, speeches for controlling slave servants and disciples. Another chance with the Nazi symbol. That's interesting. Uh, the Buddha corrected. The Book of Mormon. Oh, a different Book of Mormon. So these are all religions re, re, rewritten by Jedediah. We got, there's the symbol. Can I read those? Not a lot more X's again. Well, let's go ahead and hear what they have to say about Jedediah. Jedediah Holcomb, known as the Mystic, was a hypnotist, psychologist, poet, meditation guru, and expert on world religions. His most significant work was the unification of all major religious texts to place the Dark Lord himself at the center. Yes, everyone from Jesus Christ to the Buddha were in fact pawns of Mishrael, the breather of bile, the decapitator of slaves, the withholder of orgasms. Oh, that's so mean. To withhold someone's orgasm. What do we got? By the Father's decree, 
When this document is stamped and submitted, thus brings the final phase of Mishriel's rebirth. Submit the necessary paperwork. Okay. I guess I gotta get it both stamps. Oh. I guess. Can't take it with me, huh? Guess it's going through the slot. Cool. Hard puzzle. I mean, he literally talked about it in the audio log there. Ooh, we got fancy wax seals, and they combine to form the symbol, which I guess is what that's all about. Ooh. Do I really want to do this? <laughs> I mean, I guess that's the only thing I really can do, right? Well, cheers to you, gents. Let's go ahead and see what happens. All right. Paperwork is submitted. Receive the truth from the two fathers. Uh, okay. Where I do. Oh, I do here. Well, is that one of Gwen Sleeveless? The fathers asked me to interior redecorate the building, but people have been complaining that they don't understand why there are so many plates, forks, and spoons on the walls. For their information, I saw a TV show about a palace in Europe, and they had plates and spoons on the walls there, so sue me for trying to make this place more elegant and give it class. Oh, Gwen. You tried. You tried, bud. You leave in journal entries everywhere. People also complaining about having only, like, three paintings as decorations, but there is EW's favorite paintings he's painted, and he wants copies all over the place, so if you have a problem with them, that's not my problem, haha. -ha. This is one of those guys who says haha at the end of things when he's nervous. We got music. Crypt, huh? Holy remains of Jedediah Holcomb. Oh. Pray, pick up. I'm not praying. I'm not praying to no false god. Dream Hulk haven't revisited. Free cells follow up is something special. Quite good, but is it great? No, but quite good indeed. Huh. What am I happening upon here? Oh, that's where I came from. It's an interesting music. I guess they weren't allowed to see each other. So they put the screen up. Looks like a bunch of muses with the symbol on their face. Same on both sides. Let's go ahead and hear what they have to say in the crypt. Talk to me, Gwen. On February 18th, the fathers delivered their seed to the holy female vessel and then died of simultaneous heart attacks. Their bodies were cremated, and their ashes preserved in urns, while their souls were released into the building, so that upon the Dark Lord's rebirth, they would be one with Mishriel, the putrid prince, the horn of Babel, the apple among the corn. <laughs> the apple among the corn. Oh, okay. Reset urns. Top of yours. I have to steal some of these titles for my, my tabletop campaign. The Apple Among the Corn. Talk to me. With the rebirth of the Dark Lord soon to come, the fathers needed to be certain which of their followers were true believers, so they constructed a challenge called the Believer's Waltz. The fathers then sat in the chairs on this stage and telepathically delivered the precise steps required to complete the waltz. Those who completed the waltz were to be blessed with the gifts of the Dark Lord, those who could not were locked away to die. Yeah, how many people were able to do that? Huh. Nothing hidden back there? Alright, well, uh, I guess I gotta do something with these remains. It remains to be seen, eh? Alright. Got the urn. No 
one can stop me now. What's this? Well, I don't know if I can fall down there. So let's get the other urn. This soundtrack is really good for what this is. I mean, I guess I can't really say what this is. I'm still not really sure what we're getting at here. It's very weird. Oh, okay. Look at that. Oh, I gotta pray, huh? You're not gonna give me a choice this time. Alright. Good. Okay. Good. Thanks. Hi. Okay. This is some... Oh, okay, so we're having parallels. Which... That one's different. This one? This one? No, not that one. It's a mirror. Oh, okay, so it is a mirror. So this one's different. This one's different. This one? Okay. What? This is a weird way of praying. Okay, so these are all... So this one... What's different? This one... Great. I see. Okay. So you're basically looking for the differences across the parallels, which I suppose is reflective of the two fathers. That's pretty interesting. Complete the Believer's Waltz. Sure. Ooh. These ferns are reminding me of that episode of South Park. So if it's anything like that, then I suppose that it's... These are all just a trick. I think it's a little more insidious in the South Park episode, though. Maybe these are the dudes who died because they did not complete the waltz correctly. There's that guy again. These guys again. It's all the same painting. The Journal of Gwen Sleeveless, March 24th. I'm impressed with how Cyrus has run things since the fathers died. He uses more physical violence than the fathers. The fathers just used their aura to get what they wanted. But the spread of Mishriel's illness has really slowed since he took over. When he's not beating my back with a metal rake as punishment for something I've done, I'm usually thinking, now that's a cool guy. Well, that must be quite the charismatic duck. Uh, seriously, there's plenty of spoons in the kitchen. So I've got another spoon to return. So this is looking like a very rainy area. There's more prayer. So I think the prayer areas are all going to be that mini game. Maybe begin waltz. Let's take a look around here. So here's the dudes who were in prison. Looks like there's something in there. We got spoons. Maybe we got a spoon. Spoon. Spoon in here? No? No spoon? Um, okay, just for the sake of seeing more of these, let's go ahead and pray. Okay, well, that didn't do nothing. What about here? A lot of these prayer areas with not a lot to show for them. All right, well, let's look for some cues here to see if there's anything specific I will need to know about the walls. They say they tried to communicate the steps telepathically. Well. I guess we're just going to try. Um, can't really think of another way of doing this. Oh, okay. Well, we got a cue. Okay, 
I'm getting telepathically projected some arrows. I'm sorry, my child. Though your devotion has been great, you have shown yourself to be a fake. Deliver yourself to the cage at the far end of the room, but do not despair. Your death will be slow and painful, and your loved ones will soon forget you. Ah, uh, poor Gwen. Now how do I get out of here? Is that the ending? After a few minutes in cage, you realize, oh dang, this door never going open, and you regret taking orders from voice in the sky. You find pen and paper and write final words, which is, I am dying here, but wish I wasn't. After that, you simply stare into space and think thoughts which is so insignificant, they're not even worth mentioning. You make no important realizations about your life and is not even savoring last moments alive. After several hours of staring into space, you change final words to say, actually, it okay to die, because I'm getting pretty bored. Six days later, you get so thirsty, you go to sleep, don't wake up, and then he was dead. Well, um, that was different than the first ending. I can't even really say that that was better than the first ending. Um, but I am curious. I want to know more, and I will know more because I'm going to play more until I get the other endings and maybe maybe understand what was going on there. I mean, obviously it's a cult of some kind. That minigame was pretty interesting, and it was reflective of the narrative and the themes. I'm just not quite sure what that theme was. I guess duality. Uh... Maybe I'm reading into it too much. Maybe it just it's just what it is. But I'm still not sure if if I'm I'm, re I'm just not sure. I'm not, I I can't add any more to that. I'm just not sure what I just experienced. Um, but what I will say is we're gonna save other endings for the next video. Bucket Detective Part 2, and we'll see where where the, the rabbit hole goes. Possible ending. Main character is feeling sad. He look into mirror and say, feel happy. It works. Well then, thanks for watching, uh, and stay tuned for more of Bucket Detective. We'll see how this all plays out. Maybe. I mean, we might be even less informed later after we try and uh, comprehend things on another level. Okay, bye.